In an 8-1 to one decision today, the Supreme Court decided that a man who was blocked from sharing his faith on his college campus can pursue damages against the school, even though he's already graduated and the school dropped the policy. It's a victory being celebrated by groups as diverse as Christian religious freedom advocates to the ACLU. Joining us now to discuss, retired NFL player, author, vice president at Human Condition, and executive producer of Divided Hearts of America, the documentary on abortion. Benjamin Watson, always great to have you back. Good to see you, too. Such an interesting group uh, that came together to fight this case uh, to say that places like college campuses shouldn't be censoring speech, including about faith. Uh, a big win for folks, uh, eight to one, with only one dissenter today. Big folks who are, are, are into free speech and religious freedom on campus. Well, it's definitely a big win, and this isn't just about the Christian community. Look, one of the hallmarks of uh, America and of the Constitution is the right to express your religion freely, First Amendment rights. And so whether you are Christian or any other religion, um, anytime there's an infringement upon that freedom, everybody should be alarmed about it because that's what makes this country distinct. We have to protect that even on a college campus. And so this is a great victory, but it's also a reminder that we must stay vigilant. Look, right now in the, in the world, there is increased persecution around the world from Christians and every other religion. And so we have to protect what makes America, America, even on a college campus. I'm so glad to see this decision, as I, I know you are as well. Yeah, and we've got a little bit of video of the primary plaintiff in the case who said that he was really touched when someone shared their faith with him, and he just wanted to do the same. The college had two tiny little areas, and you had to reserve, I think it was 30 days in advance, and there were only a couple of hours a day you could do it. And even once he got all the permitting and showed up there, he was still told he couldn't talk about his faith. Um, so an important case on many levels, as you said, it's regardless of your faith. It's really about free speech uh, and what you believe in and be able to talk about that. You and your wife, Kirsten, by the way, have uh, a podcast, Why or Why Not with the Watsons, where you do talk about controversial issues and important issues of the day. Um, I was really excited to have her on my podcast to talk about the book I've got coming out about women in the Bible. Um, and you two very much live out your faith. And um, she was a great addition to our podcast and had a lot of great insights. I know it's at the center of your family and what you all believe in and what you do. Well, she truly enjoyed coming on the podcast with you talking about your book and women uh, of the Bible. We can learn so much. It's International Women's Day. And so uh, we honor women. And especially when you look at the women of the Bible and the courage that so many of them had. Um, you know, and even going back to what we just talked about, look, our podcast is about family. It's about marriage. It's about talking to our kids. And so when we look at a situation like what happened in Georgia and we look at free speech and we look at freedom of religion, Part of that conversation is how do we talk to our kids about those things? And then when you look at some of the things that you're doing with your book, I think of a woman, uh, Esther, in the Bible, and uh, we, we read the verse where it says, for such a time as this, was she brought to the place mm -hmm. where she could advocate for her people. Right now in our country, in this time, we need people who are advocates, uh, whether that's about free speech, whether that's about the family, whether that is protecting um, and fighting for justice for those who are oppressed. Uh, we need people for such a time as this who are going to stand up and power by the Holy Spirit to do the work that he's called us to do. So I appreciate you for doing that. Yeah, well, you guys are out there on the front lines having these tough conversations. Um, your book, Under Our Skin, was one of those ones I think was so important last year um, for a lot of folks to be able to broach these conversations and talk to our children and to each other about reconciliation and trying to right the wrongs and looking at what our role has been in that and trying to make things better. So thank you guys. Uh, God bless you guys. And I can't wait for folks to hear her uh, podcast installment on Women of the Bible Speak. The book is out March 30th, but uh, Benjamin, hopefully we'll see you way before then. Thanks so much. I'll see you before then. Have a good night.